On things that matter, Albanese, Chalmers and Bowen either have no answers or the wrong answers. Independent economist Chris Richardson is now saying many Australians are yet to feel the worst of economic pain. He said, I think the overall pain gets worse from here. Unemployment is expected to rise and households on those ultra low fixed rate mortgage terms will take a massive hit when they roll onto higher variable rates in coming months. Then there's this ridiculous farce propagated around the world of net zero emissions. We learn now that the aviation industry, cop this, is warning that flights to and from Australia may soon be cut back as countries try to reduce emissions and that airlines trying to meet their obligations would do the obvious thing, stop flying to Australia because it's too far away. Too many emissions. Emissions of what? Carbon dioxide? 0.04% of the atmosphere? Well done, you dumbbell Bowen. Why don't you come onto this program, Mr Bowen, and take a couple of tough questions? Why won't you admit that the coal industry that you have promised to abolish is developing low emission technology? They're called, Mr Bowen, heli power stations, eh? High, high efficiency, low emissions, Mr Bowen, coal fired. High efficiency, low emissions. Burning less coal, emitting less carbon dioxide, if that's your worry, leaving a smaller environmental footprint. The key here is high efficiency. Unless we want industry to go broke and we live like cave dwellers in the dark, the effectiveness of solar panels is between 15 and 20%, coal 40% and natural gas 60% efficiency. So Bowen ignores coal and natural gas Two thirds of Australia's coal fired electricity will close within 10 years. Closed by this mob who got 32% of the vote. The bulk of Australia didn't want them. What mandate they, do they have for this nonsense? And the national power grid operator is warning that reliability will be at risk without imminent and urgent investment. Coal is still the world's largest fuel source and the world's most populous countries China and India are going a hundred of the dozen on coal-fired power. And what about the coal royalties in Queensland? 15.3 billion. New South Wales wants to repair its budget. It's in a mess. Hike up the coal royalties. Oh, where will that money come from in the future? The Prime Minister was asked on radio last week, how do you give kids hope? After all, he's running the country, the Prime Minister. Suicide rates are up because kids are told we're a racist nation, we don't own the place. And they read Greta Thunberg in class to tell us that the climate change is destroying the world. Boys can be girls if they want to be. Girls can be cats if they want to be. The confusion and torment in the minds of young people is a national disgrace under your government, Prime Minister, and you are silent on this stuff. And when you were asked how you give kids hope, you said, uh, it's one of the things that the voice is about. Are you kidding me? The good news is that action on climate change will grow the economy and we have abundant renewables, unquote. Look, if you didn't know otherwise, you'd put the Prime Minister on the same level of cognitive incompetence as Joe Biden. How do you give kids hope? The voice. The good news is that action on climate change will grow the economy. Prime Minister, try destroy the economy. But don't worry, don't worry. Shore up the next election result by opening the immigration gates and think they'll vote for you. Huh. Then the PM was asked on radio, what do you want to achieve in the next five years? Oh gee, in five years, if you could fix the housing crisis, everyone's got the security of a roof over their head, that'd be good. Note the language, if. No responsibility for fixing the bloody crisis, but the number of people on temporary visas has risen by 730,000 since the Albanese government was elected. 730,000, now here, Temporary visas, bring them in. 2.5 million at the end of July on temporary visas when we already face a housing crisis. No homes, or if there are, young people can't afford them. And it's not even a question of whether you can afford to rent, there is nothing to rent. We learned at the weekend that the national rental vacancy rate recorded its largest drop ever in over a year. This is labour in full swing. The number of rental properties vacant is 54% below where it was at the start of the pandemic. Now in football, repeated failure to play the game fairly and you're off the paddock. But Jason Clare, the arrogant education minister with the most arrogant office in Canberra, Clare knows everything. 
Yet we learned yesterday that frustrated parents of semi-literate children are spending tens of thousands of dollars a year on remedial tutoring for children who are not taught to read properly at school. The crises are everywhere. Then there's the misinformation and disinformation bill. Shut up if you want to criticise the government. Albo belongs to the left, you see. He was bred into the left. And left-wing Labor ideology bears the hallmarks of failure everywhere. Employers, where are you? Silent, what's new? New rights for union delegates to intervene in workplaces where they have as few as one or two members. You get the drift? A union presence in virtually every workplace in Australia. Yep, <laughs> ah yeah, Albo is delivering for his mates. He promised to change the country. When he launched the voice campaign, he said unapologetically, I am here to change the country. Well, he's changing it. But Albo, you and your team have broken the rules of fair play. So many times you should be asked to leave the field and make that for good.